In April of 2008, this line that you see here moved up to cross above 0.5%. This triggered something called the Psalm Rule. Following this event, economic growth around the world began to plummet. Whether we look at the United States, Canada, the UK, or Germany, most, if not all, developed economies witnessed steep contractions in the year that followed, or in other words, a global recession took place. If we rewind just seven years earlier to April of 2001, this line also crossed above 0.5%, triggering the Somme rule. And just like in 2007, a global recession took place in the year that followed. Fast forward to today, the Somme rule has triggered once again, making many investors concerned about the future of the global economy. The question is whether the Somme rule is going to be a reliable recession indicator this time around. We'll attempt to answer that in this video. Zooming out to the 65 years of historical data that we have on the Somme rule, we do see that in the last nine global recessions, the Somme rule has triggered in every single case, which would mean we're about to enter the 10th economic downturn since 1960. And if you've been following the news, you'll know that this has actually made the news headlines, with news outlets pointing out the increased risk of a recession as a result of the Somme rule being triggered. This rule was developed by Claudia Somme, an American PhD economist who worked at the U.S. Federal Reserve, and she actually recently shared her thoughts on the Somme rule being triggered today. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But first, what exactly is this indicator? The Somme rule is an indicator that when triggered is supposed to identify the beginning of a recession. And as we just saw, it does have a pretty good track record. All of these vertical lines are where we've seen the rule get triggered 11 times over the last 65 years of data. And when we look at what happens to the unemployment rate when the Somme rule triggers, in the vast majority of cases, it does lead to a higher unemployment rate as the economy is heading into a recession. Now we're using the US unemployment rate here because the Song Rule was developed for the US economy. But given how interconnected the global economy is, a rising unemployment rate in the US also means a rising unemployment rate in other developed economies like Canada, the UK, or for example, Australia. Unemployment levels in developed economies tend to move up and down at the same time. So the Song Rule triggering today is not just something that US investors should be paying attention to but the rest of the world as well. In fact, you can see the unemployment rate in the United States has been rising steadily, along with the unemployment rate in Canada, but also in the UK and Australia. Believe it or not, this is exactly why the Somme rule triggered recently. The Somme rule triggers when the unemployment rate inches higher, like it is today. More specifically, the Somme rule uses the three-month moving average of the unemployment rate, which basically gives a smooth diversion of US unemployment. And the rule gets triggered when this three-month moving average inches up by 0.5%. When we zoom in a little bit closer, we see that the three-month moving average in August of 2023 was at 3.6%. Today, the three-month moving average is at 4.1%, indicating a 0.5% increase, which triggered the SOM rule in August of this year. When this happens, according to Claudia SOM, it means the economy is in the early months of a recession. Now, all of this is very technical, and the easier way to explain this indicator is just that the unemployment rate tends to already be rising heading into economic downturns, something we clearly see is the case today. Now, there has been one big false signal with the SOM rule, and that was in 1967, where the rule was triggered because of a briefly rising unemployment rate. But that was eventually reversed in 1968 and 69, and never triggered a recession. In order for the signal to prove correct this time around, we would need to see additional weakness in the unemployment rate as a global recession plays out. Now, periods where the unemployment rate is rising are typically not a good thing for the stock market. Whether we look at the S&P 500 for the United States, the DAX for Germany, or the Toronto Stock Exchange for Canada, global recessions tend to be a bad thing for the stock market. And with many of these indices trading at all-time highs today, it's only normal for investors to get worried about something like the Somme rule triggering. But something to keep in mind is that although we have 65 years of data for the Somme rule, this is an indicator that was only recently developed in October of 2019. The Somme rule is a very young indicator that has not yet really been put to the test. Although yes, in theory, it looks like it has a perfect track record, it's very easy in hindsight to come up with a perfect formula that fits a historical data set. The real test for any indicator comes after it has been published. In fact, Claudia Somme herself has spoken out against the triggering of her own rule. She recently published an article on Bloomberg saying that her rule was meant to be broken and that although it has triggered, she doesn't believe that the U.S. is currently experiencing an economic downturn, which of course calmed the nerves down of many concerned investors. That being said, we do have some signs to date that the rule could eventually prove to be a successful signal. In Europe, the number of bankruptcy declarations has been steadily rising in the last couple of years across pretty much every sector of the economy, climbing to the highest level in over six years. In the United States, we have a similar situation with the number of delinquencies on consumer loans currently rising at a rapid pace. This means that people are failing to pay back their loans, suggesting that they're struggling to get by in today's economic environment. This is something that we've typically seen occur before economic recessions. 
The counter-argument is that although delinquencies have definitely been on the rise recently, they're still at the lower end of the range we've seen over the last 30 years. The problem is that economics are not an exact science. There's always going to be arguments for and arguments against something happening in the future. As a trader, you need to identify which pieces of information you think will prevail as the most important determining factors of the future of the economy.